So let's just run through this a little bit. Um, on the palette, we have Titanium White, Naples Yellow Light, Cadmium Yellow Deep, Cadmium Orange, Cadmium Red Light, Ultramarine Blue. This is um, Olive Green, Blind Went Blank then, and this is Van Dyke Brown, and of course we have Ivory Black. <clears throat> So the object, as I went through before we kind of had this interesting issue with the internet, <clears throat> is that we're going to be painting something similar to this, slightly warmer colours. This is an oil sketch I painted uh, some weeks ago now. And you can see on the palette at the bottom here, we have a little oil sketch which I did earlier today, thinking the internet was working. Moving on. And behind me, you see a, a large painting. It's actually 100 and, is it 120 mil? Yes, 100 and, 120 centimeters by 60 centimeters. Good. Fun today. Right. <clears throat> so why I'm going to be painting this slightly warmer colors is that um, it's sl it, if we painted a green painting, because of modern day decor, green doesn't go very well, as I explained earlier before. I'm not too sure if you heard. So modern day decors are very much creams, blues, and reds. No greens. Gone are the floral curtains and the fabrics. Now it's very much um, well, it's a modern, modern palette, you could say. So to paint a green forest, isn't necessarily such a good idea if you want it to sell. However, an atmospheric early morning or late evening full of yellow-orange glows, that works. So that's why we're going to be doing this slightly different to the photograph. And it's also quite exciting because it's quite creative when you do something like this. You've got a, a photo guide, as you can see, if I can get this right, is it? Where are we? Oh, the other one. It's there. Anyway, it's there. <laughs> and that's a photograph I took in North Yorkshire. So you can see the... We're using that as a rough guide, but I'm not going to be painting exact. So what we have here is a, an imprimatur has already been done. This was done, I think, sometime last year. This will give you an indication as to how long I've been waiting to paint this. Um, it's a rough map. That's all it is rough map. I can tune this in, we can alter it, but generally speaking this is going to be the first layer of paint. Because it's first layer, <clears throat> we're going to be using a solvent to comply with a fat onto lean technique. And I'm going to be using predominantly two brushes. These are both Rosemary & Co. This is a number eight um, long filbert and this is a number eight extra long flat. So I'm going to put the flat down and we're going to start with the filbert. And I'm going to start with the furthest thing away. Now here we have this sky area. I want to change this. I want it to be like a early morning or a, a late evening fog, a mist. So we're going to be putting in some ambient misty Misty colours? We'll see. So I'm going to start off by putting in a fairly bright sky. I'm going to scrub this in. Now because we started late um, because of this technical issue, it's uh, 22 now. I'm going to overrun by 40 minutes as well, so I'll work the maths out later. But we'll, we'll have the full two-hour stream, albeit a little bit later. So my voice gives uh, holds out. And I'm going to put this in as if it's a first layer, so diluted well with um, solvent. Not to the point of it being an imprimatur, but just a little bit extra pigment in with the solvent, but nonetheless quite heavily diluted. Now what I'd try to do is to get this reasonably close to the value which I want it to be. 
So I'm going to put a little bit of blue in and a little bit of the orange. I think I'm going to sneeze. Sorry about this, guys. Maybe not. I've convinced myself I'm not. Gosh, I hope you're all well. It's been, I can't believe it's been six to seven weeks since I was last here. Although the uh, equipment clearly believes it's been six or seven weeks. I hope you can all hear me now. Um, do say if you can't. I think, uh, I think everything's now running, so we'll assume it, it is. And I'm just going to turn this down until I get a kind of colour that I'm looking for. So I'm using blue and orange, which of course will give me, well, it will, it'll give me a, a black. I put a bit too much orange in that, never mind, let's go this down here. Now I'm going to add that to this colour. Add a little bit more yellow. Don't want it to be I don't want it to be too bright or demanding. So it's one of those explore colours. It's kind of a misty, foggy, wet, maybe slightly damp, um, atmospheric sky. Probably better known as a summer in the UK, but uh, we're certainly having a, a bit of rain currently. Let's move this down. Hope all of you are well. We've had a delay because um, we had something which we thought would take two weeks, and it's taken six to seven weeks, so that's what the delay has been. But we're back. And uh, should be now a regular stream. Now this is, we're changing the essence of the stream in many aspects because the, um, the online school I'm hoping to launch very soon. Been saying that for a while. But um, so the streams I want to change. I want to change the streams into being more about me as an artist launching into an exhibition, what what I do, how I work, how I think, that sort of thing. Slightly different to the um, tutorials which we're putting into place on the online school. So that's very much a project-based, curriculum-based um, item, whereas the streams, I want to be a little bit more loose and creative and to go into things which we wouldn't have normally gone in to with the um, with the uh, curriculum based projects. So hopefully a bit uh, more about me as a, an artist over and uh, me as a tutor. Kind of looking forward to that because it also means that I can work on projects and do these streams and hope hopefully work towards an exhibition. Um, sometime, hopefully in America is where we are aiming for. Would have launched probably sometime last year in, into the States, but obviously COVID, bless it, changed a few plans, not just mine. So I'm just putting this in. It's going to be slightly variable because even if it was a sky, it wouldn't be blocked in one colour. So uh, I'm going to change this as I go. Adding some orange to kill the blue off. And like I said, this is very much a, a live, probably see it as white, I suppose, on the screen, but it's a shame it's the, uh, it's the camera effect for you. It's not white. It's getting on for being a little bit... Uh, 
warmer than white. I'm going to bring in some more colour into this now. You can see I've got dollops of colour as it goes around, going moving from light into dark, but then I'm going to connect them up as I go with what we call a string of colour down on the edge here. Um, that's too strong. Add a bit of blue. You see that's too strong on orange, so by adding blue immediately Tones that right down. And that's more like the colour I think I'm going to get. Yep, so we're going to go with that. To show you just how different that is to white, this is titanium on a different brush. So that's white. Can you see it? Add a bit more and stop being mean. So there we go. That's titanium white mixed in. So it's not even titanium white. It's titanium white mixed in with a colour. You can see the, the tonal value which we have there. It's not white at all. Let's push that in. Make it disappear. Good eh? Just checking everything's okay still. Do let us know if you can uh, hear me. We've got uh, the messages uh, which I can see on the computer, so hopefully the excitement of the day, apart from obviously what we're doing now, is gone, and we're going to be okay. So here we go, a bit more of this. And bring that around here. So we're going from light into slightly darker down this end. I'm going to move this a bit further on. You can see how the orange and the blue kind of do battle with each other. I want to keep it slightly warm, but then I'm going to add in some of this yellow. Uh, yeah, okay. You can see I'm scrubbing in. I'm, I'm not sort of doing this. Gosh, it'll take a month to sun this, so we're going to scrub this in. Yep. Random brush strokes. Quite exciting this to think that here we have a, a new project which will, hopefully, be hanging on someone's wall one day. So I'm rescheduling everything as far as launching in the States into, I think 2024, the way things are looking, maybe 2023, who knows, but we'll have to wait and see. So we'll give you a front front row seat as uh, we progress through there. Oh, that's a bit red. So take a bit of that blue to kill the red into there. And add some of this yellow in to change the hue of the That's better. So this is going to be uh, the beginning of our fog, our mist, which um, will form the backdrop to this painting. And some of these will be trees, which they're, they're too far in the distance. They're affected by this stuff going on. Um, add a bit of turps, a bit of orange, a bit more blue. Cat orange is such a strong colour. And then some yellow into that. Yeah. So this is really um, going to take shape, I think, fairly swiftly today, hopefully. Oh, I'm not going to say anything, just in case that we have a pestilence of frogs or something. I don't know what's going to happen next. But um, I think we're still OK. Good. So here we go. 
and they're slightly darker. And I want to put now some of this, I'm going to put a fair bit of terps on that, more blue, orange. Try not to contaminate your colours, it's never a good idea to use a brush to mix with, but hey, don't do as I do. Oh, the freedom of not teaching, excellent. No, trust me, it's always good to use a palette knife to mix your colours in. Let me get a bit more orange into that. Move this yellow in. So now, you can see that's quite a bit darker. and see if it's okay. If I don't like it, then it'll come out. I'm using a linen canvas, I think. No, it's cotton. Ah, oh, same one take two. I'm using a cotton canvas. Yes, it is cotton. thought it was linen. I must pay more attention. Put a little bit of light along here. And, uh, this is very much a, none of this will paint we're putting in will actually be seen. Um, it's a strange thing to say, isn't it? But it's true because this is first layer. So second layer is going to go on, third layer is going to go on, might even go to four layers. And so this is all just a guide. It's all a bit of um, you know, it's going to be ish colour. I'm not going to be worrying too much about it being perfectly exact. But I do have a guide which I'm kind of working towards. And you can see the this painting here is certainly cooler. Looks like it's gone a bit cool. So but we'll change that with a bit of orange as we bring in. Is warmer colours. Just want to pop that in. Beauty of using a bigger than average brush. That's coming now. So this is fog, this is mist, that's the sky which is less misty, but nonetheless it's going to carry the uh, atmospheric of, what down, of what's going on down here with it. And these are distant trees, distant hills and stuff which is going on, which you can't really see much of. So we're only going to need little patterns of things. Shapes, I should say, not patterns. I don't talk too good when I paint. Yeah, well, we're happy with that. Right, so again, coming in on here, add a bit more colour into this part. This is uh, a bit of turf to help. Solvent helps things flow, so we'll have a bit of that going on. We'll have a <coughs> hill coming up here, but there'll be other stuff going on in the background. I've got the trees-ish marked off, rough, so don't have to worry about those. And just want to bleed that across. Again, stuff going up here. Oh, the excitement. That's almost finished. So this is, um, like I said, just the background atmospheric colours going in. And I want to really boost some of these oranges and yellows in a second. Let's have a bit of a hybrid colour coming in here because I think I want to... That's it. Like a burnt orange. To kill that I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Just to tone it down. See what that looks like. Yeah, I think so. Let's 
kind of forms the back drop or the underpainting and um, so what do we paint the painting onto There's shapes of shadows and stuff and distant trees going in I'll soften that in a second but I want to first warm this up so a bit more terps. Put some more warmth in this area. It's just too yellow. It's too red. Somewhere in the middle. Trying to um, imagine where this would be in my imagination. It doesn't have to be Yorkshire. It could quite easily be Northern Oregon or something. So we just don't know. I'm sure there's trees and forests and rocks and stuff all over the world, so it could be anywhere. Right, that's nice. Although this is going to be in shadow, I think light generally sort of making it come from here, so it's going to ooze out, for what of a better word, from this area, so it's going to glow left and right. forward to how this looks in a, a while. And once it's dry, if uh, I feel it doesn't quite work on the colours, then no big deal, because that's the beauty of what we do. We don't have to worry about what it looks like at this stage. It's the finished painting we need to be worried about, not this stage. Okay, so... I'm going to get a oh, this other colour using the same brush because at this point it's, it's very much um, under painting. So, and I want it to be a bit uh, so connected up, um, relationships going on, so not too fast with messing the colours up a bit. I don't want that to be uh, as bright as this, but it will be. Uh, a little bit lighter. And the reason for that is um, orange. Keep it warm. There's some gaps in the trees around here. You can probably see if you look at the photograph. You can see there's a bit of a few gaps coming through there. Oh, that's a lot of orange. Excellent. Okay, we're getting that. A few dibbles of light around here. I don't think I've ever come across a dibble of light before, but we'll put one in. There we go, that's what a dibble looks like. Uh, here, probably nothing of that will remain. It'll be painted over. It's interesting. You're getting a sheen on that. Okay. That is interesting. 
interesting. I'm just going to see if we can improve on that by turning it around slowly. Yeah, there we go. A little bit better. I want a sheen on this if I can help it. Good, eh? Let's push the easel over a bit. Just some more fire into this area. Orange coming in. Kind of shapes, think of trees, so I put square boxes in, but they need to be a little believable, I suppose. Now you might be thinking, how on earth can a tree look like a tree if it's orange? Well, hue, which is the orange, um, it's a lot less important than tonal values. Tonal values are really important. And we haven't got to the tonal value. Well, yeah, we're putting an atmospheric tonal value in, I suppose. So we are kind of doing that. Yeah, you can do a blue forest if you wanted. Purple forest. It'll still look like a forest, as long as you've got the shapes right and the tonal values correct, then it will look like a forest. Now I'm just going to, because uh, it's drying on me a little bit up there, because this is an underpainting, I just want to kind of get a very soft feel. I'm going to just take this away a little bit. In actual fact, I'm going to use a wider brush, I think. Have I got one out? Yes, we do. Maybe. Yeah, here we go. This is a one inch. It's almost a decorator's brush. I just want to brush that across just to take any... Um, I want to soften, I suppose, for want of a better word. The edges at this stage. I won't be doing this uh, as the painting gets developed, but I don't want anything which um, is going to create an edge for me at this stage. I want it to be quite ethereal, misty, misty sort of feel to it. There we go. But I had to do that because it was beginning to dry on me. He says oil paintings don't dry. That's it. So this be effectively, if you think of this as a backdrop to the painting, you can't go too far wrong. Good. So I'll stick that somewhere there. How are we doing? Oh, good, we're only half an hour in. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, so, that's a soft brush, we don't need that. Right, so now I'm going to push further in. And I think now's the time to add a bit of this colour. This is our first green. We can have a look at it and think, oh, that's green. So, I kind of feel... We want a bit of this up here. Across here. Oops. And also on that brush. There we go. 
tree-esque shapes. Here's another one. This would be such good fun if you guys did this um, at home. See, um, see how far you go with it. I mean, look at it. It's just, it could be just, I mean, if I could turn around and say, look, just paint a mess, voila, you know, you, you, you'll, you've done well. So don't be too worried about um, not painting something like this. It's, it's really worthwhile. You can see these now beginning to, if we imagine trees, you think, ah, I hope you do. Um, <laughs> something like that anyway. Oh god, it's such good fun to be back live again. And uh, it's very frustrating. I had no studio for about um, six weeks. Literally, couldn't even turn the computer on. Which is probably why we had that issue with the internet earlier today. I think about an hour ago. Never mind. These things are character building, are they not? I feel I could do with less character. Right, you can see how this is beginning now to pan out, maybe. If you really use your imagination, okay? I mean, be kind, right? Um, it's a tree. Look at that. And the beauty of the filbert is that it's already... Well, if I show you, it's... it's there you go, it's tree-esque. It's got the right shape. So... Those are trees with no unusual there. It's a forest. Get that soft, tickly brush. I just don't want to have that connected if I can help it. Good. Oregon forest uh, made in Yorkshire. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So we go a bit further, nearer, further, nearer in. This is the next screen. So let's put a bit of dip in. Solvent. This is odorless solvent, by the way. I'll show you the bottle. It's literally, it says odorless white spirit. There you go, from Royal Talent. It's amazing stuff. It just has no odour. It's not like it has a pleasing odour or a slight odour. It has no odour, which is great. Because um, that's what we like. What does that look like? Okay, so it needs to go maybe a bit in here. I really am making this up as I kind of go along. Um, Keynotes is the nearer you get, the stronger the colour, the higher the contrast. And that's it. Um, and the sharper it gets as well, obviously. So we, uh, we want to make this nice and sharp. I'm going to put a bit of this colour in here. But again, everything which we're doing is literally just a support to the painting which is going to be painted on top. Yeah, now we begin to see the green. Be careful, we're going in 
mindful here because obviously, uh, I mean, these trees, they could be on a hill. Are we okay? Because I'm just thinking those trees at the distance obviously would be well, smaller in height and size, but then they could be on a big hill. So carry on. Excellent. It's, it's nice to think of painting through, isn't it? God, I'm, I'm having fun here. I hope you guys are, are painting at home because what a release. All the tensions disappear. You can't think of anything other than just you and your brush. Love it. Oh, there's a big tree. Yep. You can actually begin to see. Imagine the mist. You're in the foggy mist. Wham, look at that. Tunnel of light. Great. Just checking all green lights on everything. Good. Oh, excellent. I think we're getting there. Okay. Please, if you have any questions or you want to type something into the chat box, please do. I'll uh, I'll check it from time to time and, and we can answer your queries live. But I suppose until we get down a bit further where the rocks are, you're not really getting a true passion of what this is going to look like. But already I can I, I feel it. And um, yeah, I like it. You can see the similarity between this little sketch. Where are we? Do this. Uh, yeah, the other way. Um, this little sketch here to the big painting of the backdrop. So good. Complicated patches of colour. Generally speaking, just coming down. Tree-esque shape. Because if you do something which you then go, oh, I don't like that. Well, guess what? You just paint it out. So there's no real f stress at all. Yep. Yeah, yep. So where do we go next? So we're coming out of the fog a little. So I'm going to put some of this now. This becomes the mist colour as we get a little bit closer. Kind of, anyway. Because the darker greens will go on top. Now, let's move this over. Add a bit of dark onto some of this. Bit of turps, and we'll push across. You can see what I mean by a string of colour as we move from one to the other. Yep. This is a bit darker than the truth because I think we're getting a bit of glare. I've got a polarising filter on the second camera, which obviously is not in use. It's behind us here, basically, which we're not in use. I'll have to get another polarising filter for this lens. It'll stop all the glare. Right, what does this look like? Oh yes. We're not even got into the dark greens yet, so coming in around here. Yep. Just those few touches made a big difference to that area. This is gonna be really dark. Needs to be because that's really light. So we need this to be dark and mysterious. 
think of it as um, I don't know, something out of Lord of the Rings, you know, like what's in the forest. So we don't want to create that kind of wall, you know. We do that through creating some dark areas. Oops, my head is in the way. Yep. Oh, a bit more taps. I want to get this really nailed if I can before we go off there. Hopefully that will happen. Just letting the brush dance around the place. It's got a lot of turps on it, so the nice thing about that is it should dry pretty quickly. Okay. Same colour that's on this side has now been put on the other, but you can see it's I'm sure that's the glare, so I'll make sure I get a filter for it. Mm. Yeah, all right, let's get a touch into this dark colour now. A bit more solvent into that. Oh, that's probably a bit too much, but never mind. There's such a thing as too much. Okay, so we're going to come around this end. Oops, let's move that out of the way. <laughs> yeah, you can see what I mean by tree esque shapes. Nothing too technical. So if I, you've only got my hand for a second, I just want to put this in without coming, uh, seeing through the glare, if you know what I mean. Just putting some of these dark areas in. Yeah, it's definitely glare, gosh. Didn't anticipate that one. Again, just pushing down there. Oh, really? <laughs> it's good to see you too, David. It's, uh, it's been a long time. Why start with this? Let's move this over a bit. Why start with the yellow? Well, Good question, that one. Um, that I suppose really, because it's sky and you've got this atmospheric, and I wanted to have maybe some influence of a warm sun, so the tips would be yellowy orange coming through. And I wanted these are, this is actually green, it's a very yellowy green, but it's the underpainting. But I, like I said, I don't want to appear green, so. Um, that's why I've put a lot of yellow into this, but it is the underpainting, and uh, that's a debate I can have. Where's the lines? Let's get rid of that. No lines included. And uh, at this stage, it's just a question of putting stuff in. I'm trying to, trying to put something up to see if we can cut the glaze, the glare. Can you see that? I just uh, killed some of the light, so it's a glare. I'll, I'll get a polarizing filter for next week. Right, going to move into more of a dark, menacing area now. Blackness, or darkness I should say. And 
push up with some of these. More definite shapes. So let's have a quick look. Bigger shapes because they're nearer now. What's that look like? Yeah. Kind of works. So let's come into this side. Okay, that's fairly harsh. Coming into the other. Tiny bit of turps. So this distance a bit further back. We're gonna go too big a shape because if we have a big shape, it would bring it very close to us. Yeah, I'm gonna just take that back a bit if I could. Mindful, I'm probably obscuring what I'm doing. Downward strokes for these trees generally. Now you can really begin to whoosh, see that come through. So now we're going to have a bit of a light green area. I think, I don't know why, but there we go. So it's a light green area. Maybe it's just. What it is, it's a light green area, so let's put that in. Yeah. Bit of taps. So we've got this hill going up there, disappearing into the background. Um, let's push this colour in a bit more. Going to the dark side now. All I'm thinking of is the shapes that a tree would make, not a tree as such. So I'm mindful this sticks out. I need something to support it of similar weight. So I'm going to take this and just make that a little bit darker. Yeah, okay, so we'll connect that, I think. Line that off. Yeah, okay. Again, where's that inch brush? Need it to... Uh, Misty up. Don't want anything too sharpened or noticeable as a shape as such at this stage. Yeah. As long as it's a bit ambiguous, that's good. Even I don't know what it's going to be, so don't want anything too. Formed. I'm trying to think of the words that are in my head, but there you go, it's, a, it's another story. Again, over here, just a little bit, do to one side, do to another. I guess what I'm saying is that I don't want an edge as such. I want a softened shape going from one to the other. It's going to be more believable, especially when we come to do the second layer, the second stage. Then we'll start painting the trees on top of this. And they'll look a lot more tree-esque because they've got all this background stuff going on. I think it's a good point to make. See, when you're starting out painting, you want it to look like a painting or a photograph very, very quickly. I don't, because I don't want it to look like a photograph. I want it to kind of develop as a painting. So I'm in no hurry, and it doesn't have to look like anything at this stage. What I need is a patchwork of colour. Um, believable to my 
shall we say, the philosophy of the painting um, so that it works, so that it has a, a story which uh, tells some truth and um, mainly tonal value will give you that. I can't say this enough either, it's that uh, I think again when you're starting painting something or you start learning how to paint, you've got to get the right colour, you spend ages getting the right colour. Um, colour's in three elements, three, three parts. So you have tonal value, hue and chroma, bang, that's it. So the first one is the most important, tonal value. If you get the tonal values wrong, well, just, it's not going to ever look right. You can be off with the colour. You can paint a blue forest, trust me. Um, have I got one there? I think I might do. Here we go. Uh, a blue-esque forest. Still looks like a forest, but it's in blue. Well, it's not finished yet. But you can see if you can imagine it, I'll bring it closer. <laughs> Try and get it the right way. It's, it would make an interesting painting in blue. The tonal values make it. If your tonal values are wrong, it ain't going to look like a painting. It's, not, it's just not going to work. So it's the most important thing is your tonal value. I'm going to really push some dark into this area. And it's kind of all in here. In actual fact, I'm going to put black in. I think this is too light. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's not. I think the brush is. Um, let's have a quick wipe the brush. How are we doing for time? Marvellous. <laughs> Got an hour, ten minutes left still. Good. Look at what we've done in just that time. So, great news. So now, yeah, that's better. If you've got a lot of stuff on your brush, then wipe it. Um, I kind of feel this needs to, where are we? So, okay, so I kind of feel we've got a, some dark coming in here. That's dark. I might lighten it up in a minute, but it's is actually dark. I want it to be dark anyway. So that's dark. Just putting in some of these dark shapes in. And then it's darker. So let's have a quick look here. About there. Yep. About there. Bit of terps. Yeah, see what I'm doing now? It's just dark, so I'm not worried about what it looks like. It's just a darkness. Merge that into the top. Good. Make that even darker. In a minute. So this, I'm going to paint over the trees. I'll paint the back. I know where they go. Okay. More dark. Oh yes. Bit of turps. Help it flow. I literally just dipped the, terp, the brush in the turps and then just slapped it on the canvas. Good. So this is basically black with a bit of um, yellow in it, making a very dark mix. Okay, so I'm going to take that over the other side. I think this, this paint's swift, so this colour, it's lighter on the other side, so we don't go quite as dark. But we do go dark. And the line I want to take with this is pretty much there. 
think the sketch which I did of this painting is reasonably true. There's some light bits coming in. Just patch those in. Oopsie, now, so. Yep. And then dark. Let's get that in. Ooh, a bit of turps. That'll help. Oh, yes. What I want to do with this, oh yeah, I've got some shame, sorry about that. So, what I want to do with this dark is create shapes of, or shapes really, shapes of dark, shapes of light. Um, what they're going to be, I'll figure out later. But this is distance now, so I'm going to start being a bit gentle with it, coming back into the light. And then. Oof, gone. Yeah, literally, maybe a bit of a hill there. Good. So we've got a hill up here, we've got a hill down there. Some dark areas along the way for interest. And a bit of light area maybe on the way for interest. So let's get a bit of green and yellow to make a yellowy green. And come back into dark. I'm breaking every rule of the uh, painting book here by uh, using one brush from light into dark, but hey, don't tell anybody. Yeah, you see you've got bushes going back. Excellent. That's exactly what we wanted. So let's map this out. Um, right, let's have a quick look at the... Uh... <laughs> Looks fantastic. Well, thanks. Thanks, son, for that. Need all the help I can get. Um, from a distance, it don't look too bad. How does it go? Some of my best paintings look brilliant from about 10 miles away. Yeah, so I'm just going to now, with the one inch, just again, just take away anything which is remotely looking like a uh, sharp edge. It's never too good a way to blend this. It's, it's, I'm not blending, I'm just, what am I doing? Um, blurring, here we go. It's another blue, another blue. I'm blurring, not bending. Uh, blending. So, I just want to blur the edges a little bit at this stage. If the painting was further down, I would, the road, I would not be doing this. Um, I just want to create some dark and light softened edged areas and it will become believable yeah good inside here we'll have bits of light bits of all sorts trees the works but right now it's predominantly dark right let's come over to this area and we'll put a bit of something in here now yeah, thinking about it, I kind of, this is a combo, isn't it? So what do we do? We have, I think, we don't want to go too dark, we don't want to go too light. I've got that dark line which I put in. Never regret what you do. Um, yeah, kind of works-ish. You can tell I haven't really quite sussed this out myself yet. So it's it's really sort of it's an exploration of I know in my head what is it, what it's gonna be, but it's just exploring 
it's really kind of uh, refreshing. I like it. Coming in, maybe just a little bit of up and down. And there's that brush. Yeah, blurry. What a great, oh, great word. I have to remember that one. Um, bit of orange. Yes. So what the orange is doing is just creating a bit of warmth. Few warm tinges. We'll, we'll work on that in the uh, on the next layer, but uh, I think it'd be nice just to stick a bit of, you know, why not? Yeah, it looks well. Got like that. Says as he paints over it. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, so what we have now is going to be a bit of warm earth coming up so I want to put a bit of the orange in the taps let's put this in yeah okay so it kind of comes across in this very much so yeah that looks Since uh, we've we were last, since we last met, since I've last been on stream, um, major major event has taken place, and uh, I'm still recovering from it. Even though it was about almost two weeks ago, I turned 65. Good. Um, so it's true, <laughs> there is life after 65. Um, Bit of a milestone that one for me, I must be honest. Uh, several dark moments of wow, how did I get to 75? But um, I have a greater respect for everybody who is over this age now. It's like, well done, gosh. But. Uh, Difficult, um, difficult birthdays sometimes. You, you know, oh, that's an easy one, and then you realise oh, that's not such an easy one. Either. It's like when you turn forty or fifty, you think, gulp. Well, I did anyway. It's a little midlife crisis. Beckons. I'm just pushing this in. I want it to be slightly lighter, like it's coming out of this dark. But um, I'm very mindful of just exploring this bit of yellow. It's going to be fundamentally green, but I want it to have a bit of. Um, Orange-esque-ness about it. That's another word for the dictionary. I'm looking at the computer because I see the whole painting. Actually, I love it. It's nice. I like the colours. Okay, so we'll continue. Um, anything which doesn't work, we just paint out. Not a problem. This. Just get this in. I'll get the dark area and so I'm going to go to a different brush, we'll go this one. Um, bit of turps. I want to put some of these dark shapes in. So that's all I'm going to do just for a minute, just map out some of these dark areas. Oh, let's not uh, forget over here. So actually, uh, probably should 
do that first. Okay, so we'll come back on that one. Um, yeah. This was a dark. And I've, can you see the difference the mark makes of this brush? It's a, it's a flat, like a chisel. with strokes. So it looks like there's trees growing up. What I'm doing here, if you imagine that as the canvas, I'm doing this, doing that. So I'm curving the brush. So I'm not starting on the canvas and working up and down, it's curving. I'm touching the canvas on the, as the brush is moving and stroking it up. And what this does, it creates a, a soft um, upward stroke, which you can then do a lot of different things with. But effectively, it looks like there's trees from a distance. A bit around here. Get back into this. I just want to create a bit more depth of dark into that area. Sorry, I'm obscuring it, aren't I? Forgive me. A couple of uh, months off doing stuff and you realise you forget everything. Right. Just take that up. Yes, that's good. Just what I kind of wanted. Ish. Maybe. Need a bit more dark up here. So a bit of more dark goes up there. Yeah, I think even more. Let me push home this area. So I'm going to come around this end of the camera just for this bit. I only want to have a dark feed coming in. Oh, I just knocked the camera, didn't I? Oh, that's the best way to go. Oopsie. There you go, you know where the camera is now. Right, kind of in back. So that's that. So, so I've come back to this. I still feel this needs to go darker in there. So I've now got two brushes on the go, a dark brush and a light brush. The solvent goes in. My aim is to do the best to get this covered today if I can. That's my goal. How many minutes have we got left to do? Okay, we've got just under an hour to do it in, so I'm going to go with it. If I lose some of you who are watching because obviously the stream over and no worries, obviously it's going to be. Tomorrow I'll process the video and it'll be on YouTube for you to watch in stages. Catch up with it later. Let's take that up. Yep, and what are we going to do here? I want to go slightly darker green so that we, that's it. Yep. It needs to be done in little stages. So having done that. Put some of this complicating that scene up. Now, got a little point of interest there. I feel like painting a cloud.
complicated. It's not all the same shape. Soft brush on that in a second, maybe. Right. Take away that edge. Good. Now this. Just green it a little bit. So I got a bit distracted on doing this, but never mind. Let's just put that in. Yep. Wow, it's going to look spectacular, this. So, all good. Okay, so we've got a bit of something going up there, which is nice. I'm going to take a darker value and just come in on this to create this dark area. And you can now see that. And we can take that too light. Still too light. Let's get some of this in. Going off up the forest. Look at that. Very, very symbolic with me that there's a path going somewhere out of sight. I, you'll find that a lot in my forests. I don't want anybody on it because it's my forest, it's my walk. But I want to see that and I'm curious now as to where it goes. And as a viewer looking at the painting, you're going to go, wow, where does that, where does that path go? When you stick somebody on it, it no longer becomes their, their forest. It's now somebody else because they're in it. It's their walk. Yeah. Now, this is very personal. <laughs> so you probably realise I've got probably one of those, I don't know, a majorism, but it's very personal to me. So I'm not saying this is what you should do. It's just that's how I feel. If I'm in the forest on a walk, I, I just want me in the forest. It's, it's, I want the solace, the solitude. I don't want to see a, a group of others coming or on my walk. Um, that's just me. Well, OK, I feel exposed. <laughs> Let's come on to this uh, dark area now. There's got to be some comments on that one coming soon, I'm sure. Um, I used to, as a, even as a young Low, sort of, you know, in my 20s, I used to find an awful lot of solace from going on walks in the, in the woods. And I uh, used to do my thinking in the woods. Now we are getting into some of the structure of this. So Let's, in, let's take these darks down. I'm very mindful of doing something, which is this water. So I think I'll do that straight away. Uh, smaller brush? I suppose so. No, no, no. I want to, no, I'm not going to. Sorry, I was a debate in my head, didn't I? <laughs> so I'm going to use a big brush for this. Now, it's really I want this colour initially, which is gone. So no worries, we'll mix it again. A uh, bit of blue. Bit of orange, we'll mix some of that. We want blue. Bit of light. There we go, a bit more blue. It's better to have the wrong colour on 
a palette that you're trying to mix the right colour because then no colour at all. But no colour means you you've got nothing to analyse. You don't know if it's too light, too dark, or whatever. Well, that's definitely too light. Yeah, a bit more orange. But if you've got the wrong colour, well, you can you can play with it. You can have a go at making it lighter, darker, change the hue. Not too, not too dissimilar. Right, so a little bit of terps. Not too much. Now, I like to think there's going to be some sheen going on here, but it's going to take the colour of the sky. So, not yet. Let's see what happens here. It comes down. Here's a place, a bit more warmth. Yes, you can really feel this now. And um, we've not done anything to the banks yet, so I'm beginning to enjoy this. Good feel, good feel. Bit more orange, bit more light. Naples yellow, I think. Scene one, take two, Naples yellow, I think. Kind of. I'm going to make that a little bit lighter, so ooh, that's a lot. Stick that in. Yeah, that's better. So, where's this going? That's shadows. Oh, where are we? Let's look at this. Well, I can always bring it, put it, put it back in anyway, so no worries. Why should I be too concerned with this? I just want to get that in as a light. Bit of taps. Sorry, I'm mindful of obscuring what I'm doing again. To learn how to record again, it's clear. Yeah, so that's going to be the path of the stream. Let's just put some of this in. Where are we? Here. Bit of light. Maybe a waterfall or something. A little. Wishy going on there. Maybe another wishy going on there. And it definitely looks like something's going on here, so we'll put a bit of light in it. Just this is a memory jumper for me to think of it as, you know, sort of, um, what do they call it? White water. We'll call it light water. Okay, we'll figure that out what that is later, but generally speaking, we, let's put that in. That's the black coming in. I knew I shouldn't have put that there. Never mind. Okay, there's our river. Now, check, I'll try and get this in. So, okay, so speed painting, book one. Let's go. I'm going to put some dark in. I want this to be reasonable. Coming down. Let's 
something like that. We'll get it darker on the second pass, but for the now, that's okay. You don't need it to be exact. It's inspired by not a replica of, so and if I wanted to be exact, I'd take a photograph. It's supposed to be a painting. Now, actually, also, putting in darks where no light's going to go. So let's get back into this. We need a silver. It's predominantly... Um, so quite reflective. And <clears throat> we'll have this as kind of rock colour. So there you go, that's descriptive, isn't it? Rock colour. Um, let's see how we go with this. So a bit of French ultramarine blue, a bit of orange. That's red, so we'll get that. That's ish the colour. Kind of. And then that's silver. Silvery. Light rocky. Ideally speaking, I'd like to have a little bit of um, alizarine crimson or permanent matter deep into this mix. So, don't think this red is going to give me what I want, but we'll see. Uh, more blue, more red. See where it goes. I might drop a bit of alizarine in. Alizarine is a purpley red. So it's going to give me more of a, I think this is going to be too green, too blue in actual fact, light. What's that look like? Okay, well we'll put it in and it'll be near, near enough. That's a lot of solvent, never mind. So this is the shape of the reflection on the tops of these rocks. What's that look like? It could do have been a little bit um, something. We'll see. Near as near as ish. I mean the value is I think. I think the value is good, so We'll rock with it. Oh, we'll rock with it. Oh, gosh. Sorry. I should apologise for that one. I didn't think I cringed. But it needs to go slightly darker there, so we'll darken that in a minute. Let's just put this in. You can see where I, I am if I got out of the way. You can see where I am on the photo. I'm just using the photo as a inspiration, but now we're close. We're very, very close. Here we're ah, you know, a mile away, two miles away. Well, a mile away. Here, very close. So here we are going to see every nook and cranny. We would see nothing back there. So it's very important that we get this kind of working. Okay, now I'm going to get the dark in, um, dark green, mossy-ish, let's get that in down there, brush out of the way. Getting there. I'm just more than anything, I'm not looking at shape just for now. I'm more interested in the um, in the tonal value. But we can look at shape anytime. Let's get this in. Bit of terps. Make it flow a bit better, a bit more terps. 
Oh, this is pretty dark. So I'm not using black. It's actually a... I've got a bit of Van Dyke brown in here. I've got a bit of uh, green in here. Uh, quite a bit of black. And I think a tad of orange from the ring. I did a short video prior to going online. Uh, on air, I should say with um, this little colour sketch uh, here so we'll uh, we'll make that live I'll cut that up as a video and put it on the little um, tweaks on shape I'll do another time I think I'm going to put the bare bones in. That looked too convincing, but never mind. Bit of a snail looks so it's kind of going over there. If you're wondering why I keep disappearing, I'm looking at it from afar. And I'm not taking anything for granted. Let's carry on with these shapes. We get this in, so there's another big shape here. Let's have a look where it goes. So that shoots across there. Okay, dark. Yeah, let's move this in. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be exact, fortunately. Oh, I lose too much sleep over this one. Take the essence of what we have. Here's where we get a real good sense of um, perspective. Big rock like this. Maybe some little rocks going in into the background. Don't join, but they look like they sort of do ish. There's a little something between. Dark bit there. Coming across, bit of green goes through here. This is really kind of looking at. I've got a photograph which is what you see on the bottom right. I've got the same photograph just below the easel, which is my reference. <coughs> True, like I said, I'm just using as a as an ish shape. Right, we've got this big mass here.
God, isn't this fun? So it's fun for me. <laughs> Let's just carry on with it. Here we go. So let's pop it over. So we're looking at just focusing on these simplistic shapes and seeing where they start and stop. We can begin to map out this. mossy colour there. So let's go into here. Come down. Down again there. Good. Let's just put that in. Okay, now we, I can start, I can put um, some of the details, I wasn't going to say that word, um, smaller shapes in later. Don't need to do that now. Let's look at that as a, it is a bit of green, so bit of moss colour going in. What's that? And we've got a few bits. moss greens and things going into that one as well which we can complicate later just want to put that in just so I can see that there so I'm just behind the camera again Okay, and we've got a few here as well, which this needs to be lightened anyway because we don't want to go too dark too far away. So that's good. And just leave that out. And we'll push into this next bit. A bit of light. Actually, there's a bit of orange as well, so it's nice. Comes in across the back. Cuts that. Goes like that. Get this again. Right, let's get this in. So. Here we have some greens coming on that last bit. It's darker green, but no worries, it's still green. this kind of just paint out if I can get it yeah so this is really going to create a sense of real depth 
as we push back into this. Right, I've got about 20 minutes ish left, so let's see how far we can get. Bit of white, bit of blue, bit of orange. There we go. All the smaller nooks and crannies of this rock um, will be painted uh, the next layer. Right now, it's just a question of getting the rock in. Shapes. Nothing more complicated than that. Kind of a bit darker there than I needed to, but um, it's one of those, well, it's always out of the picture, so I'm not really that fussed over it. Right. I think it needs to go higher, though. So a bit more blue, a bit more white, a bit more orange. Solvent, a bit more solvent, a bit more orange, a bit more blue, a bit of everything. There we go. Right, so up here, screw this in. Yeah, so this comes up ish to there. Kind of comes that. Let's just push that across. And then we can come in with some orange. I'm going to use a different brush for this, so they've got another chisel, looks like. And these are look like leaves. I think it must have been autumn, clearly. There's some autumny leaves on the bottom. So a bit of burnt orange, adding a bit of blue to the orange, turning it down. Don't want it to be too, too much. Let's see what this looks like. Could do it being a tad lighter. Because when you go lighter, you lose your chroma. And it goes pink. Don't think we need it pink. A bit of maple yellow. No, need a white. White's got, uh, it's a cold white, this, so. One of those colours I do. I think I'll get it in and then we can fiddle with it. Get a terps on that and shove it around the place. Down here, we've got a 
have a light shade coming up. So cross here into this. It's like a bed of dying, decaying leaves. Not exactly that colour, but never mind. It'll be the right colour on the night. Yep, so 20 past is it. So let's get into the dark. So that comes across. comes in kind of that way. I'll look at the uh, big shows. I'm kind of sort of rushing this a little bit, I suppose, mainly because I would like to get it in the seedling if I can. Probably work on it tomorrow for a bit. The next time you see this, I'll be adding some details onto stuff, so That's here. A few patches going in. Generally speaking, it's a it's a dark bank. For want of a better word. Terps. Moving into nothing. Put the detail on that laser. Right, so let's come across here. That dark is there. Bit of light green hitting top of that. And kind of going up. patches and then back into just putting these darks in a little bit here and that okay into this dark. <sighs> well, 
last push and then we'll hopefully where are we? We're gonna get lost at this stage. Here coming across. There's that dark going in. Oops, didn't quite want to go over that light dark bit, but never mind, we did. over here so that's that which is relatively straight dips using about four different brushes currently in the hand so just trying not to lose where I am grayesque Ish. Top of that is a bit of grey. And we've got some grey stuff going on there. And really, this is that. There's a bit of grey here. The grey obviously is the tops of the rocks. It's darker, greener. Wrong brush. So let's think of this for a second that comes over. It's easy to get lost, especially if you're flitting from one to another. I would like to get these rocks in approximate right, right place because it's Mother Nature, so she she does best. I don't need to make something up, it's in front of me. Bit of solvent. in the wrong place. A few of those I dare say. No but for time. So it's ten minutes, let's say ten minutes left. Break this up with a bit of green. And Make this lighter, a bit of solvent. Mossy esque. lighter slightly a bit more solvent 
So you can see I'm using quite a bit of solvent to get the paint to flow. It's nice. Always likes that. That works too. Yeah, we're beginning to get some depth into this now. So we've got some stuff going on. It's a bit of orangey-esque things, but it's not bright variety orange. So let's kill that down a bit. Green will kill the red. Don't want to make it too dark. Though. Right, compensate for that. Okay, so let's get some rock shapes going. I'm using, getting thin on the ground with this colour, so I think the orange is virtually spent. Don't want to use the uh, red because it'll give me a purpley esque colour. Kind of just looking for a Bluey silvery colour, so there you go. I think that's about it. So this is there. That goes across here and up. Numerous other places. You can build the dark shapes around this, I think. Now, where are we? Here. We are there. Top is a bit light coming down, comes up. So we haven't quite got this right, but not a million miles away. As long as you don't get it too close, we'll be fine. Another benefit of saying it's somewhere in Oregon. <laughs> Let's have a look. Okay, so here we've got some stone, but there's some loose, dry, dead leaves on there. So we put that stone colour in. And then we'll just add a bit of rouge burnt. Rouge, got a bit of blue onto that. I can do the. They all come alive in the detailing. Dark. Just a little speed painting, but it's good fun when it's like this. And like I said, it's. Just, if I can seal the canvas with paint, that's a benefit. I don't need to have it just so, although that would be a benefit. Also. Well, first stream, kind of, in, whoops, wrong colour. See, I can't talk and paint at the same time, it's so true. Don't want to go too much into here, but a little bit of tickle would be nice. Right, 
and back of the ear. So it's a quick eye of the palette. Right, so I'm going to just go on the search for the obvious. I think this is kind of a long way off in the distance, so don't want to go too high contrast on that one. Okay, this we can fill the blank in in a second or two afterwards. That's, I think it's pretty well covered. What's this? Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to come over that. He thinks. And we just got a bit complicated as we come up. So this comes across, goes down, kind of does that ish. And this just gets cut up a lot. I want to go too dark up here, so I might lighten some of those areas in a second. Very mindful of I was telling you about a picket line fence before. We don't need that either. Where you just make things look twee by putting a rock where there's a space. You need space. Okay, so this begins to get the that tunnel effect going in, which is, can work on this and improve on it. But it's getting there. Okay. So we've got a lot to do with these dark masses of trees that we see. So I think, I know we haven't done this but time is up. 37, so can I do that in three minutes? Well we give it a go. Uh, green, it's light, it's mossy, it's about that. It needs to be light because it's near to us and it needs a bit of contrast in there. That's just moss down the rock. This is again mossy rock, but it's going to go lighter and it's going to lose colour as it goes into that mist. Okay, so that needs to be toned down a bit.
Donna does tone it down with a high chroma colour. Kind of what I'm doing. Yeah, that works. It's moving this over into this. There's lots of green, mossy areas. And then I'll pop the darks in, and I think we we can then look back and go, ah, looks a bit like a forest painting. So dark bits, and then we're done. Put these other brushes down before I forget where my hand is. Oh, feel my fingers. So here, I've got a dark coming across. Some jaggedy bits coming over. I can see the uh, exact shapes, or the I can work on the shapes later. Not a problem. It's a big painting this to do all of this in just one two hour stream, especially when we had a bit of a an exciting start. Um, moving that over. I think we did reasonably reasonably good. I don't think I could have done any better had it taken longer. Sometimes if you just do, you don't think it's really an asset. Thinking's overrated. Think too much. Don't do anything. Yeah, so we're almost, it's only this tiny bit of dark and then I think we can sit back and go, aha, we've started a painting. And that's nice. Especially when I, this is going to go to part of my collection, the launch. It's a bit dark, so I'm going to add a bit of green-esque to that, just to lighten it up a bit. Coming in again, uh, a bit more green, this one. more minutes and we're, we're there. So this big rock is there so it kind of goes up-ish, dark, never mind, comes over, goes down and then we've got this little, whoops a daisy, wiggle. Wasn't very deliberate. Never mind. Just change the shape of the bank a bit. Well, a lot really, but never mind. I think this has become my bank as opposed to the bank. Yeah, that works. As we go further back, it doesn't go as dark. So I think, I think that we kind of have it. So I'm going to Leave it at that, let's get to one side. We've got a really good start of a painting. Um, let's look at that sketch which you see where the palette is. I think it's more advanced than that. 
We got. I love this dark area, and this is therefore light. It's, it's really bringing you into the painting. The stream coming across it as a diagonal, and then this mist and fog coming in. We can play on this and bring it up the bank a bit. These will be trees coming across, <clears throat> broken up with the uh, trunks and branches. This will have some detail. This will have lots. This will have a bit less. That will have none. But And therefore we'll get this sense of depth as we look at it. Listen guys, thank you ever so much indeed for joining us. I'm sorry about that bit of internet trauma which we had to the very beginning. Um, we'll work on that. But uh, we managed to do it in the end. So thank you for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. And next week we'll develop this and uh, let's see how far we can get. So have a fantastic week and uh, I shall look forward to seeing you next weekend. Next weekend, next Tuesday. Okay, all of us, thank you for joining. Bye for now.